Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another um, recap of the um, U.S. Olympic Trials track and field. And this is technically, according to Peacock, is day eight, but it's really day six. Um, and today, again, we only had one final. We're gonna have a lot of finals the next day on Saturday, so definitely buckle up for that. Um, I actually am in the middle of watching Saturdays as I'm recapping what happened on Friday. But anyway, without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's get in, let's get into it. Um, this isn't gonna be that long of a review because again, we only just similar to um, Thursday, we only have one final. And the um, first um, event that we had um, for today, <clears throat> actually we had a couple of finals that happened that was like separate. Um, so the finals for like the men and women's um, race walking, that did take place. Um, I'm not gonna necessarily recap that, but I just kinda wanted to let you know that happened if you're interested in checking that out. Um, I guess the main reason why I don't want to recap either of those historically, the United States have not won those events. I don't even know when the last time someone from the United States has won either of those events. That's um, definitely usually an event that Europeans win. Um, so I don't, I'm not familiar with the athletes and I don't think it's fair for me to recap something that I'm not familiar with. So we're just, we're going to you know, move on from there. But I do want to let you know that is on a separate event that you can actually check on Peacock if you want to review that. Um, but anyway, after that, the next event that we had was the first round and it's the women's javelin throw. So this is not the final. Um, I would say the most noble athlete for this particular event is Kara Winger. Um, she was set to retire and that's the main story. She was set to retire. She donated her um, javelin um, to the like Olympic um, Museum and she actually um, so when that happened um, she basically you know had to get it back because you do have a time where you can like loan it or <laughs> to um, compete but right now she is ahead um, when it comes to qualifying but at this moment, she still does not have the Olympic standard. And I'm going to post real quick what the Olympic standard is. So you can get familiar with that. But that was the first event that took place. And then after that, it was a men's hammer throw first round. I'm not as familiar with that event. I will recap it when the final happens to kind of let you know who won. But uh, again, I'm not as familiar with that event. Um, and then after that was the women's um, 400 meter hurdles. And that was interesting in itself. And I'll go into that next. Okay, so then the next event was actually the women's um, 100 meter hurdles. And that was interesting in itself because there were a lot of notable names. Um, well, there was one major notable name who was in this, but not necessarily a contender when it comes to going to the Olympics. Um, so here we had um, Michaela Russell. She's the, one of the favorites to make it to the final. And this is a semifinal. Um, we also had um, uh, Kenny. Um, um, Harris, she's the other favorite, um, and her name's short for Kendra. And then um, Christina Clemens. And then the other athlete that is the main notable athlete is um, Jojo, sorry, um, Lolo Jones. She competed. And what was a big deal about this was that um, she's 41. So she's definitely past her prime. And also, everyone who did most of this event pretty much qualified because they had so many scratches that people were basically just running and practicing their form. Like, you had, like, uh, Kenny Harris. She literally went last place. She didn't even really care because there was everyone was pretty much in. Um, and so, Lolo Jones even advanced to the semifinals because of that. 
Um, but it's notable because she's actually pretty mainstream. I feel like most people know who she is. She was one of the only athletes that comp- who has competed in both the Summer and Winter-, Winter Olympics. She was in the bobsled. So it was good to see that. And then also, I forgot to also mention the other celebrity that was here for this particular round was Terry Crews. Terry Crews was practicing doing the hammer throw. So I kind of wanted to call that out as well. But that's pretty much how this event went. So then the next event was the women's pole vault. And with this, we had um, Katie Moon. And she's the most notable athlete for this. She's one of the few that actually had the, has the Olympic standard. And um, all the others are kind of um, newer to the game. And um, right now, this is just the first round of the women's pole vault. So we'll get more into it once we get to... Um, the semifinals or finals. Um, I think they don't even have a semifinals. I believe, I believe they just have a finals. Anyway, so then from there, we then have the women's um, 1500 meter race. And that's the semifinal was fun to watch. But that final is going to be something else. Because we have Nikki Hilt, Sinclair Johnson, um, Heather McLean, um, we have um, Corey McGee, L. Saints Pierre, Emily McKay, who's our training partner, um, Melissa Cranny, and all of them already have the Olympic standard, and some of the others that qualify do not. But this is going to be interesting and fun to watch once we get to that final. Um, but that was just the semifinal took place for that, and. Um, after that, the next event that we saw was the men's 400-meter um, hurdles. And Rye Benjamin is still the clear favorite of this event. And I will say CJ Allen is kind of next up. And Trevor Basket, I'm not sure what we're going to get from him because he did not necessarily have the faster time when it came to his, um, his semifinal. Um, but... At the same time, I don't know if he was conserving for the finals, but we'll, we'll find out. So they are all in the finals, and those were the notable athletes from that. And then after that, the other event that took place was, this, was the men's triple jump. I will recap that when we get to the finals because I'm not as familiar with those athletes. And I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to just state it again. I am more of a track um I, I'm I'm more familiar with the track stars versus the field stars. Um, I just now, I guess in recent years, started watching more of the field events just because it's there. But I also am kind of interested in too because I know it takes a lot of athleticism to do that as well. But I will say as a whole, because I'm not as familiar with the field side of things, I'm, I'm not recapping that as much. I'm recapping more of the track uh, events because I'm more familiar with those athletes. And as I mentioned before, I've been following track and field since I was a little girl. So, and the distance stuff start happening. Um, and when I got older, just because I also myself, I also run distance. So there's that. Um, okay. But anyway, from there, we had the men's um, 800 meters um, semifinals. And that also was pretty interesting. But the favorites for that is going to be Clay Murphy. Hobbs Kessler and Bryce Hopple. So I would say those are people we need to look out for the most. Um, Brandon Miller, he did pretty well too. He had actually a um, personal best during this event, but I'm not as familiar with him, but th- these are the people we need to look out for. And um, with that um, as well. Next, um, we have the women's um, semi-final for the 200 meters. And this one's going to be interesting come the finals as well. um, Because we have quite a few people that have been on the world stage before. We also have a lot of people who have ran some good times this season. So um, the noble athletes, of course, is Gabby Thomas. Gabby Thomas and um, I was... Between Gabby Thomas and Shakira Richardson, them two are the, the favorites. Um, definitely more on the Gabby Thomas side because Gabby Thomas is someone who can do 400. So she is a favorite for this event. Um, and then Mackenzie Long, they've been, you know, she's been running really good um, races late, up lately. And then um, 
Abby's um Abby Steiner, she is recovering back from an injury. So I would still be on lookout for her, but I'm not sure. It's just really at this point, the the first person, like we I feel like Gabby Thomas is kind of like the main person to watch out for. But there are a lot of names. We have Jenna Prandini here. We also have Brittany Brown. I think before I said um, Tamira Brown, I, that's Tamira Clark. I combined two names together. And then we have Tamira Davis. Um, Brittany Brown, I believe on the Diamond League, I think she actually beat or was close. Yeah, no, she actually did beat Sh um, Sharika Jackson from Jamaica on in the um, Diamond League for the 100 meters. So she has the power. So I think she's capable when it comes to this as well. So the final is going to be interesting when it comes to this. Anyway, after that, we do have the first round of the women's um, shock puck. And I would say the two clear favorites is Chase Jackson and then Raven Saunders. She's back. Um, them two already do have the Olympic standards. And then we do have another athlete that is somewhat of, might be familiar to a lot of you. Her name is Maya Lesler, and that is Brock Lesnar's daughter. And now I feel officially old because she was born in 2002 and she's trying to get onto her first Olympic team. But <laughs> in 2002, um, just if y'all want to do the math, that's when I graduated high school. So yeah, I officially feel old now. But anyway, that's the other athlete that um, after this first round advanced. And so that's the other notable person. And then the other semifinal that happened was the men's 200. And that is going to be fun and stacked as well. Um, we have Nora Lyles, Christian, Christian Coleman, um, Arian Knight, Kung Fu Kenny. Um, and then we also have Courtney Lindsay and um, Kyrie King. So there's a lot of names and hitters for this final that's going to be kind of a big deal um, that has have advanced to the finals after the semifinals. And then last but not least, the main event of this um, day of track and field was the men's, um, it was the men's um, 110 meter hurdles. And um, We'll, I'll get into that next. So for the main event, um, the um, 110 meter hurdles, um, yeah, Grant Holloway won. And it to, no, to nobody's surprise, like he was a clear favorite. And then after that, the next person after, um, who placed after him was um, Freddie. And then after Freddie was Daniel Roberts, and he always makes the team. So Trey Cunningham did not make it to the Olympics this year. He actually did not have a great race, to be honest. Um, and I kind of felt that that was going to happen, and unfortunately that did happen for him. So his um, time getting to Olympics is over. Um, but that pretty much concludes the event um, or concludes um, this day in track and field Olympic trials. Um, I will be covering um, Saturday's coverage soon, as soon as I'm finished watching it, because I'm watching it right now. Um, just a quick preview. One of the events I'm actually watching right now is the women's um, 10,000 meter final. And we have some familiar faces there, and I'm looking forward to covering that. But anyway, that does conclude um the review for today please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything on the content it's your girl sharon aka the Mel nostalgic runner and i will see you next time bye